The U.S. Department of Homeland Security halts in New York visas for Filipinos with H-2A and H-2B visas. What is worrisome is that someone would take that information and use it to harass teachers who are simply doing their duty. The Commission on Elections sets to investigate the alleged harassment on teachers during the Bangsamoro Organic Law plebiscite. And a majority of Muslims nationwide favor the approval of the proposed Bangsamoro Organic Law according to the latest Social Weather Station survey. Good evening. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has announced that Filipino workers under the federal H-2A and H-2B programs will no longer be allowed to seek employment in the U.S. Sonny Cause tells us why. The United States Department of Homeland Security, or USDHS, halted the issuance of new workers' visa to Filipino job seekers across the United States. The one-year ban, which takes effect from January 19, 2019 to January 18, 2020, prohibits additional Filipino workers under the federal H-2A and H-2B programs. The order, according to the notice posted on www.federalregister.gov dated January 18, cited the overstaying and human trafficking issues as the main reasons for the ban. Under the U.S. immigration rules, H-2A visas are temporary visas issued for foreign agriculture workers. Meanwhile, the H-2B visas are given to foreign workers employed in the non-agricultural sectors in the United States. The DHS also noted that the U.S. Embassy Manila issues the greatest number of T-derivative visas among all U.S. posts across the globe when such visas are supposed to be reserved for certain family members of principal T-1 non-immigrants or for certain victims of a severe form of trafficking in persons. Given such situations, the DHS and Department of State or DOS believes that these overstay and human trafficking concerns are severe enough to warrant removal from the H-2A visa program as well. This according to the agency caused a fourfold increase in H-2A visa application from nationals of the Philippines between 2015 and 2018. The DHS clarified, however, that the notice does not affect the status of aliens who currently hold valid H-2A or H-2B non-immigrant status. Meanwhile, Presidential Spokesman and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panello said the government would have to respect the latest regulation limiting foreign workers in the U.S. President C, he says whatever your laws are, you, we will never intrude into that the same way that whatever laws we have, we will enforce it. So if that is the law in the U.S., and if there were violations, then we have to respect. If they have basis for that. We will only react if our workers are being mistreated, maltreated, or being discriminated against. But if they violated the laws of the U.S., then they have to face the music. Panello said the Department of Foreign Affairs is expected to look into the latest U.S. decision affecting Filipino workers. Sonica's UN TV News and Rescue, Los Angeles, USA. The yes vote dominated the canvassing of votes for the inclusion of Cotabato City in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. From Cotabato City, Nel Maribok is on the line to tell us why. Yes, Nel, good evening. Good evening, Rina. We are now just awaiting the last election returns of yesterday's plebiscite before the Cotabato City Plebiscite Board of Canvassers concluded the county. But as of now, the yes vote is dominating the canvassing of votes. As of 7.04 p.m., based on plebiscite Board of Canvassers' partial results, the yes vote got 31,031, while the no vote got 22,507. This result came from 85% or 321 out of 374 total precincts. Supporters of the Bangsamoro Organic Law gathered here in front of the Sharif Kabulsuan Cultural Complex with lead monitor outside where they could see the canvassing of votes. If the yes vote wins in Cotabato, it will write a new page in history for the city as it had been unwavering in its opposition of being included in the autonomous region for Muslim Mindanao, as reflected in earlier referendums in 1989 and 2001. And that is our update, Swina. Thank you so much, Nell Maribohok, reporting live from Cotabato City. 
The Commission on Election sets to investigate the alleged harassment of teachers who will serve as plebiscite committee members in the plebiscite for the Bangsimoro Organic Law or BOL. Nel Maribok is back to tell us why. The Commission on Elections reported their general assessment of yesterday's plebiscite. According to COMELEC spokesman James Jimenez, they didn't see any big problem with the election day except for some delays in some polling centers. The poll body also believes there are no issues concerning the presence of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front in Cotabato City during the plebiscite. This is amid the reported the MILF's alleged intimidation on some voters. The presence of, of MILF individuals, of elements of MILF, was known uh, here in Cotabato City, but they were in civilian clothes, they had no arms, and they were, they were, their presence was matched by an augmentation of the forces of the AFP. Comelec will also investigate the alleged harassment on teachers who will serve as plebiscite committee member. This is one of the reasons cited on why some teachers withdraw their services in the plebiscite. What is worrisome is that someone would take that information and use it to harass teachers who are simply doing their duty. Uh, yun, ang, yun ang nakakabahala. No? Uh, but we are looking into it to identify who the person is or persons are behind that move. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Cotabato City. The Commission on Elections defer the canvassing of votes of yesterday's plebiscite on the Bangsamoro Organic Law. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The Commission on Elections opened the canvassing of votes at 11.30 this morning from the recently concluded plebiscite for the ratification of the Bangsamoro Organic Law. The National Board of Canvassers or NBC is composed of the Comelec Chairman Sheriff Abbas and Commissioners Al Pareño, Louis Tito Guia and Marlon Casquejo. The Comelec ANBAC, however, decided to postpone the canvassing to 1 p.m. tomorrow, January 23. This is because they have yet to receive the certificates of canvas to Comelec main office in Palacio del Gobernador in Manila. The NBC expects to receive four certificates of canvas from the Regional Board of Canvassers in ARMM, the Provincial Plebiscite Board of Canvassers of Basilan, for the inclusion of Isabela City and those from Isabela City and Cotabato City. Inopen lang namin para continuous yung aming kwanjat proceeding. So anong paso kay canvas namin? Kung ano. Normal yun sa amin na talagang i-open namin today. Tingin ko wala. Sa ngayon wala. Walang darating ngayon. The poll chief noted, however, that the progress of the canvassing depends on the volume of COCs and plebiscite returns that will arrive at the Comelec Central Office. Within one week. Oh, kasi apat lang naman yun. Ang tinitingnan na namin yung travel time nung magdadala ng COC. The NBC will also do the canvassing of the seven COCs from the second day of plebiscite on February 6, which will cover Lano del Norte except Iligan City, Alyosan, Carmen, Cabacan, Midsayap, Pikit and Pigkawayan in North Cotabato, and several barangays in the core area of the Bangsamoro region. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Majority of the Muslims in the Philippines support the approval of the Bangsamoro Organic Law or BOL based on the fourth quarter of the 2018 Social Weather Survey. Rosa Licos tells us why. An estimated number of 7 for every 10 Muslims in the Philippines support the approval of the voters for the Bangsamoro Organic Law or BOL. This is based on the latest survey of the Social Weather Stations or SWS. The report was taken through face-to-face -face interviews with 1,440 respondents nationwide. Large majority of respondents, or 79%, support the approval of voters in the BOL plebiscite. This comprised of 67% who want the BOL to be ratified, and a little over a tenth, or 12%, somewhat want it approved. 14% are undecided and the remaining 7% definitely do not want it. Malacanang said the initial unofficial tally of the votes from the first plebiscite yesterday is a close validation of the survey results and is confident that the BOL will be ratified. Residents in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, Isabela City Basilan and Cotabato City were first to cast their votes for the BOL. Pag napasa yun, ibig sabihin eh, matutuwa yung mga sakop ng region except those yung mga against. Like, 
ko tabado yata in Sulu. Yes. Pero wala na sila choice eh. That's the law. Everyone has to toe the line. The palace also hopes that with a BOL ratification, the pursuit for peace and development in the Bangsamoro region will commence. Meanwhile, the BOL plebiscite will take place in parts of Lanao del Norte and North Cotabato on February 6. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The printing of ballots for the 2019 midterm elections may possibly be rescheduled. Commission on Elections Chairman Sharif Abbas said that this is because they are still completing the official list of candidates for the said elections. The poll chief said this uh, they are still waiting yet to release the list as there are still some cases that they have to decide upon and they are still waiting for the certificates of the finality of the cases of some senatorial aspirants such as Sergio Osmeña III and Senator Coco Pimentel. The schedule of the printing of the 61 million ballots for the May 13 elections was initially set on Sunday. Uh, in the iron out lang namin, most likely, uh, ngayon, pipilitin namin ngayong week. Kasi may mga pending din kami, Kwan. Pangalawa, tinitingnan din namin yung, yung uh, pag na-ratify kasi, babawasan namin yung Diba, naglagay kami sa ARMM na portion mm. sa balota. So kung halimbawa makita namin na uh, pumabor na yung yes, tatanggalin na rin namin yung sa ARMM Sorry, na position. So, A Filipino sculptor reigned as the king of ice carving in France. Jun Garin tells us why. A 46-year-old Filipino bested 19 international ice sculptors in the recently held 28th Valois International Ice Sculpture Competition in the southeastern city of Valois, Savoie. Rohel Cabisidan was named King of Ice Carvings for his frozen masterpiece entitled Sitting, which shows an abstract form of a woman with raised hair sitting on a pile of ice cubes. <laughs> Bali, transparent yung, uh, yung yellow at uh, walang crack. Kasi magandang temperature lalo sa gabi. Negative 12, negative 8. Kaya yun, uh, namintay namin yung ganda ng yellow. Bali, nag-stay uh, nag kami hanggang 1 o'clock in the night. Para kasi doon yung magandang yellow, maganda magtrabaho kasi matigas. Tapos pwede kang magdikit ng yellow, hindi siya ma 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 matutumba kasi malamig. The competition was held from January 15 to 18 with participation from different countries including France, Russia, Denmark, and Mexico among others. Rohel, a native of Paite, Laguna, has been living in France for eight years now. He works as a chef in a cruise restaurant in Lyon, France. Rohel said he developed a penchant of sculpting or carving since he was a kid. He has tried working with various materials like food, vegetables, fruits, cheese, butter, and chocolates. Since he migrated to France, he decided to try carving on ice. Rohel said he dedicated his recent achievement to the Filipinos and his home country, the Philippines. Jun Garin, UNTV News and Rescue, Paris, France. Up next on Wine News. The Manila City government ordered the temporary closure of Manila Zoo. And Jemmy Picardal and Ariel Lamy Apalis advance to the semifinals of the Wish Covery Season 2. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Brina of Limor Camera. Good evening. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor camera left off. I'm Angela Zego Castro III, and here are the headlines. Philippine National Police releases the list of crimes frequently committed by minors. The culpability of children should be different from that of the adults because they have immature brains. A Council for Children says teens are still immature to be held criminally liable. And the Manila city government ordered the temporary closure of Manila Zoo. The House of Representatives' version of the, the age of criminal liability among minors 
is pushing for the meeting out of penalties on parents or guardians of nine-year-old children who commit serious crimes will be criminally liable. Grace Cassin will tell us why. Under Section 20 of the House Version on the Age of Criminal Liability Among Minors, parents of children who committed any serious crimes shall undergo mandatory intervention program. Failure of parents to undergo the said program unless prevented by a lawful cause will be ground for imprisonment from 30 days to 6 months. According to Attorney Mario Junisha Jr., this section will not violate any existing laws. This especially so when such parents or guardian are proven to have been neglecting these children who commit crime or what is called children in conflict with the law or CICL. Kaya naman nagiging misguided yung mga CICL, mga individuals na ito, dahil sa kapabayaan ng mga magulang, kulang sa proper guidance. Gabriela Women's Party, however, is not in favor of this proposal. Paano na yung case ni Kian de los Santos? So, sino paparasandon yung magulang? Diba? Napaka-unfair, napaka-unjust. According to Council for the Welfare of Children Executive Director Mary Mitsi Kaayon Uy, technology and the social media have a huge effect on the relation of parents and children. Mas may time tingnan ng smartphone. Kaya yung bata nagwi-wish na sana smartphone na lang siya. Kasi sure siya na may attention siya ng nanay at tatay niya dahil smartphone siya. Dr. Camille Garcia, a psychologist, said when parents have no constant communication with their children, this drives children to commit crime. So bilang isang magulang, ikaw ang gagawa ng parang para mapabuti ang anak mo at maging maayos sila. Experts call on parents to raise their children on doing what is right so as not to be a burden in the family and a menace to the society. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Philippine National Police has officially announced that, the, that it is favoring the lowering of age of criminal responsibility of minors. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. The numbers of minors who had been involved in crimes in 2018 have comparably gone high since 2017. Based on the Philippine National Police, Children in Conflict with the Law, or CICL, the number of children with criminal records has increased from 10,388 in 2017 to 11,229 in 2018. PNP Chief Police Director General Oscar Albayalde said this prompted them to favor the proposal to lower the age of criminal responsibility among minors to 9 years old instead of 15. Topping the list of frequently committed crimes by minors in 2018 were physical injury, theft, malicious mischief, illegal drugs, and rape. The number of children who got involved in illegal drugs also increased from 481 in 2017 to 857 in 2018. Among the areas with high involvement of children in illegal drugs were Metro Manila, Central Visayas, Calabarzon, Central Luzon, Cagayan Valley, Ilocos Region. Sok Sargent, Davao Region, Sambuanga Peninsula, Northern Mindanao, Western Visayas, Cordillera, Mimaropa, Caraga, Bicol, Eastern Visayas, and ARMM. Director General Albayalde is confident that the number of minors who get involved in crimes will reduce once the proposed law is enacted. Natututo din yung mga matatanda na ginagamit yung mga bata dahil alam nila yung mga bata hindi makukulong. So ito rin mga matatanda ang nakikita natin nagtuturo dito sa mga bata na sasabihin din nila na hindi naman kayo makukulong, hindi kayo pwedeng ikulong ng pulis. The most that they can do to you is to uh, turn you over sa DSWD. The PNP chief added that parents of minors involving crimes must also be meted out with punishment. Dapat may batas din na yan na kung mahuli yung ano, that should be included also. Mas mabigat dapat yung parusa doon sa magulang kung mapatunayan na ginagamit niya yung kanyang anak dito sa hindi maganda o so hindi tama o uh, nagbabayulit o lalong-lalo na sa pagtutulak ng illegal na droga. Lea Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krami. The Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council believes that the culpability of children in a crime should not be treated the same way as that of adults. Joanna tells us why. 
The Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council presented to the Senate the various scientific studies which say that the ability of an individual to discern the consequences of his or her actions begins at the age of 14 to 16 years old. This is the reason why the Council stands firm that the culpability of children in a crime should not be treated the same way as that of the adults. The Council made a statement during the Senate hearing on the proposed lowering of criminal age of responsibility. Attorney Trisha Oko, the Executive Director of JJ WC said this is the reason why children at this age are considered immature. But the culpability of children should be different from that of the adults because they have immature brains. And um, based on scientific evidence, uh, usually the brain of a female uh, matures at the age of 22 and male 25. We also found in our studies that uh, within 14 to 16, that's the time that they really start to know the consequences of their action. And, um, but the maturity really completes at the age of 25. Attorney Oko also pointed out that even if children have the ability to discern their actions, their decisions are being controlled by impulses. Based on the study also, it showed that even if um, these children know that what they're going to do is right or wrong, it's usually their impulse that controls them. When they make decisions, they don't make it because they know that's, that's what being told to them as right or wrong, but because of peer pressure. So it depends on their priority and also because of their immaturity. The organization also said that currently, there are only 63 established Bahay Pag-asa or Youth Detention and Rehabilitation Centers in the country, 55 of which are LGU-operated, 5 are non-operational, and 3 are being operated by non-government organizations. She also said a lot of Bahay Pag-asa in the country do not have proper facilities or have worse condition of lavatories than ordinary detention centers. Kawawa po yung mga namomonitor namin sa Bahay Pag-asa. Meron po tayong konting ideal example, Valenzuela City, ang ganda po ng Bahay Pag-asa nila. For the rest, subhuman conditions, they lack the minimum staff requirement, they even lack food for children. Some of the Bahay Pag-asa we saw, uh, mas malala po po siya sa kulungan, wala silang, wala silang programs, wala silang beds, wala silang cabinets, walang, ang mga bata doon, they're just told to uh, keep quiet the whole day. This prompted Senator Richard Gordon and Senator Franklin Drillon to question the way the local government units administer the youth detention and rehabilitation centers in their jurisdiction. Because of this, the committee will summon the officials of the Department of the Interior and Local Government, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, and the Philippine National Police on Friday to discuss the matter. Meanwhile, Senator Gordon, who chairs the Justice Committee, is pushing to set the minimum age of criminal responsibility to 12, contrary to the House version of 9 years old. Nine, I think, is too tender. I'm more leaning now to 12, and I'm recommend to 12, but after about three years, we look it up and then we increase it to 15, and eventually to 18. Joan Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Philippine National Police has undergone reshuffling of several high-ranking officials. This following the retirement of Police Director Eduardo Garado yesterday as the Chief of Directorate for Police Community Relations or DPCR. He was replaced by Police Chief Superintendent Benigno Durana Jr., who was the former PNP spokesperson. Durana in turn will be replaced by Police Senior Superintendent Bernard Banak, the former Assistant Chief of the Supervisory Office for Security and Investigation Agencies or SOSHA as the new spokesperson. Manila Mayor Joseph Estrada ordered on Tuesday the closure of the 60-year-old Manila Zoo after it was tagged by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources as a major pollutant of Manila Bay. In a memorandum dated January 21, Mayor Estrada ordered the zoo's closure to give way for proper assessment and study of the eventual rehabilitation of the decades old amusement park. Estrada also directed the City Department of Engineering and Public Works and the Department of Public Services to submit a program of work for the installation of water treatment facilities or sewerage treatment plants not only for Manila Zoo but other facilities as well. In the statement, Estrada cited Environment Secretary Roy Simatu as saying that the zoo had been draining untreated sewage into one of the estuaries leading to Manila Bay. 
In line with this, the mayor also called for full support to the national government efforts to rehabilitate Manila Bay. Manila Zoo is a 5-hectare park known formally as the Manila Zoological and Botanical Garden. The zoo was opened in July 25 of 1959 and was dubbed as the iconic family site in the city of Manila. Heart-pumping action awaits the fans of PBA legendary players in charity basketball event set to take the hard court of the Smart Araneta Coliseum of Lays on February 17. Victor Cosari will tell us why. PBA fans are sure to have a great time in the forthcoming exhibition game of PBA Legends at the Smart Araneta Coliseum on February 17 as they once again get to see the hardcore heroes who set the hearts of Filipinos burning for basketball for decades. The exhibition game will feature the prominent arch rivals in PBA history, the San Miguel Beer versus Alaska Milk and the Barangay Ginebra against the Purefoot's Hot Dogs. Naisipan namin, sinasabi nila, sinasuggest nila na Chris Patoyota uli. Pero sina, sinubukan namin na kontakin lahat ng, ng mga players. Pero karamihan, eh, hindi na makatakbo. <laughs> Siyempre, kami yung mga nasa first generation. Kaya nagsuggest sila Alan, sila Alvin, yung second generation na lang na San Miguel, uh, Alaska, Hinebra, Pure Puts. Para kasi at that time, during the second generation, nagkaroon ng mga rivalry yun. The said basketball charity event is a project of the Samahan ng mga dating professional na basketbolista sa Pilipinas Foundation Incorporated in cooperation with the Philippine Basketball Association or PBA and UNTV. Kanil lang gusto ay to take care of their own. Bigyan nila ng mga tulong kung sino man yung mga nangangailangan ng na mga basketbolista at yung kanilang mga pamilya na ngayon ay wala ng kakayahan. Kaya po ito isang magandang adikain at isang magandang gawain. Kaya ito ay sinusuportahan ng UNTV. All out support kami kung anong hilingin ng legends. Kasi kung hindi naman dahil din sa kanila, hindi din mabubuo ang PBA. So malaking tulong ang legends, lalo sa UNTV na tumutulong din sa kanila. So talagang nagpapasalamat kami sa UNTV na tinutulungan kami mga PBA legends. The idea of forming a group started in April 2015 wherein an exhibition game was staged between several PBA legends and the UNTV Cup All-Stars. The charity game was aimed at giving assistance to PBA legend Avilino Samboy Lim Jr., also known as the Skywalker, who slipped into coma after collapsing in one exhibition game in November 2014. In 2017, Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Razon granted 1 million peso seed money to the group as initial fund in helping former professional basketball players who are sick or have medical concerns. The group formally registered at the Securities and Exchange Commission in 2018. It was also in the same year when the group organized the first ever PBA Legends charity golf tournament. And this year, the PBA Legends, whom Filipino fans had adored in the 80s, 90s and the early 2000s, are raring to showcase their basketball prowess once again in this spectacular charity event. Please watch PBA Legends Return of the Rivals on Sunday, February 17. 2019 at the Araneta Coliseum. Watch it live on UNTV. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Semi finalists of Discovery Season 2, the singer and the song, are brought to Metro Manila for the next battle. Rosalie Cos tells us why. The semi-finals of which Coverly Season 2, the singer and the song began last night. First to battle on the Wish bus were Wish Coverlys from Camp Rani Raimundo. This include Rando Manalus. Lorraine de Guzman. Jemmy Picardal. Jemmy 
Janelle Kaalin. And the wildcard recovery, Arila Mi Apalis. Rani had to pick two who will advance to the next round. Masakit ang ulo ko dahil ang hirap pumili. Pero masarap naman na pakiramdam ng puso ko dahil... Hindi ako nagkamali sa pagpili dun sa lima. Jemmy and Arila Mi were the lucky ones to win the knockout battle. I think a competition which is may issue showcase namin kung anong originality ng Pilipino pagdating sa musika. It's the turn of Wish Cover composer Junji Marcelo to select his two Wish Coveries who will get closer to their dreams. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescues. Up next on Y News. Taliban attack in central Afghanistan kills more than 100 security force members. The refugees and migrants who come to Europe they do not bring any exotic diseases. A World Health Organization report dispels the myth that refugees coming to Europe are spreading disease. I mean, I feel a bit emotional, but not too much because I know that, uh, again, I really worked hard to get here. And Greek trailblazer Stefanos Tsitsipas reaches the Australian Open semifinals. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Y News returns with William Theo. I'm Angela Jago, Pastor the Third. Good evening.